Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Discover 2016 Las Vegas. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas for HPE Discover 2016. This is SiliconANGLE Media's The Cube. This is our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante. We have coming back here again, Tom Bradish. Welcome back to The Cube. And we have Jason Willis, Citrix Architects at Mechanics and Specialty Health. Welcome to The Cube. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome back. So uh, Tom, we talked um, uh, this week about IoT, but it also there's also other great stuff going on in your group. You're the GM of the IoT infrastructure as well, servers. And and Moonshot was one of the biggest announcements over the past few years that we've seen from HP. Talked about on the keynotes multiple years. We were there with the Cube at its launch. I call it a God box, because it had so much wow. like potential um, uh, with it. And we saw it right away, we're like, wow, this is really great density. But then there's been a reinvention, chipsets and whatnot. Give us the update. Moonshot sure. is back on track, it is on track. Antonio Neri was highlighting that yesterday. Yes. Um, and you mentioned some of the successes that, that's been happening with it. What is the Moonshot reinvented uh, plan and uh, status? Well, sure. Share the yeah, update. And uh, as, as you know, and I think the audience knows, Moonshot is for the IT, it's for the data center and the cloud, the IT industry. And uh, my uh, colleague and friend, Paul Santler, launched this brilliant architecture. He's quite a visionary. He's done a couple of other new product categories in his career, like the first eight-way system on Intel architecture. But Paul had a vision that we could have this uh, value in this particular system and a platform. And then uh, recently we initiated what you just said, Moonshot Reinvented. It's a initiative that has four points. I'll go over them very quickly. First of all, we have uh, graduated to Intel Xeon technology. Uh, the Xeon uh, brand is a, a flagship brand at Intel and they're a great partner and we're using that particular technology as our main processor in the system. Number two is we have also included our famous integrated lights out management technology. Now this is famous HPE technology that I, I've been aware of in my career for many, many years. And we're literally shipping millions of these and we're managing hundreds of you thousands. You should compete with that technology. I, yeah, very so you frankly, know. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to bring that up too much. But, um, uh, uh, so you're very I, aware of how good it is. Yeah. <laughs> That's true, if I say I won, then that uh, d disparages my company. If I say I lost, then it disparages me. So I have a no win. Yeah, one. yeah, just take it right down the middle, pass. Yeah, right. Next question. But I did, but that's a fact. And, it's, and I can say, I, even objectively then, it's very good. It's hard to unseat. It's pleasing customers like crazy. Now it's in moonshot. So the point is it's different, it wasn't. Yeah. We reinvented by putting, and the other two real quick is now we have uh, another chassis size. It's a one U form factor. We have the larger size that can fit up to 180 servers. Now we got another you know, form factor. And then lastly, our relationships with partners. Very key in this industry. Accenture has a moonshot practice. SIFI Technologies, North America, and also in Asia has a moonshot practice. We have a relationship with VMware now. Our relationship with Intel and Citrix has been strengthened. And those are the four points of moonshot reinvented. And the last thing I'd like to, to close with is that Citrix relationship has strengthened to the point where our customers are recognizing Moonshot Invented, recognizing the value of that intimate relationship, and I'm so happy to have a customer here with, with Jason. I want to get, I want to get yeah. Jason in a second, but I want to ask you on those four points. You bet. Um, which is uh, Intel Xeon, new chassis, uh, lights out management, and then the partnerships obviously in the industry. Bottom line, what's the impact to customers on that? Because obviously those are the mechanics of the, of the, sure. of the, yeah. of the new growth plan. Impact the customers, what does the, it mean the, to them? Yeah, the impact is they're getting uh, workload optimization in a form factor that is among the best, if not the best in the industry from a density performance, so they can get the job done quicker and get their business outcomes quicker. Also from an energy performance, so it costs less to get those very outcomes from an energy perspective. Everybody wants to save money on the electric bill. So those two values economically allow us to really transform a data center into a lower energy, which is, is great for the earth, great for the business uh, at hand, and also much more productivity coming out. When you get something done fast, you get an answer done fast, a job done fast, it's all about how quickly you can get things done in this economy, because uh, technology is just moving yeah. at a crazy pace. And, we're and just tactically, this is available now, it's a shipping product. Well, absolutely, yeah, in fact, we've been doing well with that. Yes. Jason, so let's get down to the customer perspective. What's your take on it? You've been kicking the tires on this thing, put it through its paces, a couple laps around the track. What's the uh, what's the what's your take on it? So one of the big things for us, I mean, um, we met we met last year here at HP Discover, and that was really the first time that I had got to see and kind of feel and kind of talk about Moonshine. And uh, we did an extensive demo and extensive testing, and before we were able to bring it into our environment, and 
the numbers and the performance that we were able to show of this thing is unlike anything I've ever seen in industry before. Um, I, I, I absolutely. I'm sorry, I didn't hear it. that. <laughs> that? I've never, I've, I've never seen anything like this in industry before. It, this, the technology is so amazing. Um, what we can do with that little cartridge, um, the the ideas and the limits are just endless. Give us an example of what blown you away. So one of the things where, so we uh, we did our tire tire people soft upgrade. Um, one of the things we did was uh, we went from went from running virtual servers and we moved to the Moonshot platform. Well, I had I had four servers. I had four nodes. I turned on. We had we had. 5,000 users in this uh, group, and I turned on pre-launch, and we were in the middle of a go-live, and we had about 60 or 80 sessions running natively, turned pre-launch on, there was over 130 pre-launch sessions still on that cartridge, and even with, <clears throat> with the number of active sessions we had, it, we broke 200 before I started to like, oh, I, I, I got to start shutting this down. So I started killing sessions, slowing things down, and, and, and in that, in that, I probably shouldn't have done that, but in that, um, not got one complaint from anyone in our finance department. It, it, it was just incredible at, at the density we were able to accomplish. Is it the nature of the workload that lends itself well to this type of architecture? Uh, can you talk about, because oftentimes it's the, it's so workload, performance is so workload dependent. I wonder if you could address that or maybe Dr. Tom, you could you add go first. Well, and, and one of the things, right, so I mean, not, not every application will be able to get that many sessions on a box, but, um, what, what we were utilizing was just Internet Explorer, and uh, we're just launching a published application from a website. And that's how we were able to get that density. We had that, that, that workload that was just compiling on there, and, that, and that's all it was doing. Um, and, our, and our people have been very happy you know, with the product and, and how well we were able to achieve. And workload optimized has been a big part of your strategy, so what are those sweet spot workloads for Moonshot? Yeah, very good point. In, in this uh, industry, workload optimization and specialization would be a synonym it's very popular. Our Apollo line does that, the Moonshot line does that in very, very unique ways for big data applications, for high performance computing applications. Uh, this particular application that uh, Jason uh, at his company McKesson is using it for is called the mobile workspace. And that is to be able to remotely host a desktop session where it's really not happening at your desk. And, and the beauty of that is you annihilate the time and the place dependency on your workload. So it's running back in the data center where it's much more secure easier to manage, and then also accessible in the bring your own device world, as well, you know, from home, work, on the road. And the McKesson company being a leading healthcare company putting out you know, products and services for the healthcare industry, that's really important, because you know, healthcare is not limited to an office, right? It's very much a very uh, ubiquitous thing at, at clinics, at hospitals, et cetera. Jason, I want to ask you a question. Two themes that has merged out of this CUBE sessions this week is that I like that kind of teased out of this was a comment made by uh, IT KPIs, less meetings means more productivity. So if you're not in meetings, that means stuff's working. <laughs> and you don't have to get, it means get approval. Uh, and the other one was um, um, what uh, Chris Shu, the COO, was talking about, which is the enemy, because he's a military guy, he's talking about battleground, the enemy is complexity. So I want to ask you specifically, because this now becomes some of the things that we're seeing, some of these, these purpose-built boxes and these God boxes that have great capabilities to converge stuff and servers, is about reducing the complexity. Well, I, Share your thoughts on, on how this all fits into that. Is it relevant? Well, you know, and to go along with it, I mean, I, the motto I've always tried to lead with is keep it simple. You know, and, and, I, and I really feel like with this technology, we're really able to do that. Um, provision, going back to provisioning to bare metal and, and, and makes it really simple. We, we can open up a cartridge, drop those cartridges in during the middle of the day and nobody knows any different. You're just adding another- Non-disruptive at all. Non-disruptive at all. So I mean, it's, it's really made, I, I think it really is going to simplify how we do things. Um, and, and being able to now with this new one U option, to be able to take that and ship that to some of our practices where previously we were getting you know, um, C7000s or we're putting, we're putting in the big boxes out there and we pay by the U. And when, when, space is, when space is limited or you're paying for that space, you want to try to get as much compute and much power as you can into a small area. And that's what this is presenting. So just the blocking and tackling alone on just shipping the boxes, coordinating the little things. Right. I want to say that's an excellent point. It all has to do with, as an IT professional, you're in the data center and the ability to manage things and as a family man, you want to go home at night. You don't want to be sticking around after 5 p.m. constantly having to learn new things, manage things. 
So with a Moonshot box, we can put many types of applications in this mobile workspace, many flavors, if you will, in one part number to learn and manage, one part number to upgrade. Uh, it doesn't have uh, uh, many cables, and cables are a big issue, as you know, as well. So it gives this man freedom to have another life, as well as do his IT work. <laughs> so Jason, you come to conferences like this, you hear a lot about digital transformation, and these you know, big picture themes. What's happening in your business? You've got you know, electronic medical records, you've got meaningful use, you have, you, you know, a lot of, frequently docs are say, you know, known as not to love technology. What's going on in your business that's, that are the drivers and, and how does something like Moonshot affect that and support that transition? Well, I mean, really what we're, I mean, Moonshot, it, what, I think what Moonshot's going to do is really just open up the doors and, and let people see what, how performance and how applications can truly perform when they're running on this platform. I think that's going to be the biggest thing. When we get to the point where doctors are happy, doctors are using the equipment, um, we've got our primary application, Inomed, and if we could get that, we get that running as, as good as we can, it's, it, it's going to be a no, it's going to be a no brainer for us. So Dr. Tom, I have to ask you, you're talking about your four points of reinvention. The one that really struck me is the relationship with the partners. Mm. And you mentioned Accenture and I think Sithi. I'm not familiar as what much with Sithi, so no offense to them, but Accenture, I mean, global SI, one of the top in the world, yeah, if yeah. not the top, arguably, make that case. The, the, the question I have is, the big SIs, don't hate me for saying this, they love to eat at the trough. So they don't, they don't put resources <laughs> in unless they see a big market opportunity. What's driving the interest from, for instance, in Accenture? You have a good point. Uh, uh, just real quick, one of the managing directors and I, of Accenture and I did a webinar about a Moonshot and how uh, services can be required in many dimensions. Sometimes a company has their own ability to deploy. Other companies don't. They want a third party like an Accenture to deploy. Or they want someone to uh, manage it because of compliance issues, union issues, or whatever the case may be. Now, you make a good point about it is quite easy to do. You're right, it is easy. You can, and you testified to that as a user. Plug and play, I know it's an abused term, but there's a lot of the ease of use. But what I believe is appealing to a, a system integrator and a value added uh, you know, supplier is two dimensions. One is although they're quicker and easier, there's, it's, it's appealing so there's many more of them. So it's kind of conceptually volume. You know, I can do many, many of these quick and easy and get out and repeat that particular process. Number two, because it's so, such a robust platform, especially with the Xeon technology, the SSD technology, value add can be added. Different management, different monitoring. Uh, for example, um, the SIFI Corporation that we just mentioned here, they're looking at how to do monitoring. And to be able to monitor the use of a particular program to know if it's even required anymore in the industry, or if it's being abused, or if it's you know, valuable, if it's worth the money, is extremely valuable. So real quick, you know, lots of quick ones combined with this notion of adding more value is, is the appeal to answer your question directly. Where's the moonshot vision going? Uh, Tom, I mean, this is, the, this is, we want to see the arrow going forward uh, as you guys continue your innovation strategy around Moonshot. Obviously, IT ops sure. is critical, but you got, you know, the three pillars that we hear all the time is IT ops, security, and developers, or AKA, you know, administration, provisioning, things that might put, yes, yeah. putting stuff out there. Yeah, the vision is to, mer to make specialization easier because when you specialize, you think, well, I got special people, it's harder because you're doing this, it's not general purpose, it's not, you know, but we're literally taking the best of both worlds. See, is a mutually exclusive objective many times with a specialized workload. The first is, because it's specialized, it takes a lot of work, right? Uh, but yet I don't want to put a lot of work in it, I want to turn key and to go quick. So, uh, and when I do lectures and I uh, talk to students, I'm an uh, adjunct, uh, uh, faculty at universities, I tell them as young people, if you can find a mutually exclusive objective and solve it, you can catapult your business and even your own careers many times, right? So here's what we have. How do you do the thing that takes a lot of time in a short time? I mean, how do you do the specialization and optimization, but quicker and faster, and no longer submit our customers to that workload? So that's the vision. Um, and we, we have some way to go to improve it. I'm not trying to say we're there, but every time we can do okay. that, we work with uh, the Intel Corporation who's improving their technologies tremendously. Yeah. We get a little oomph on helping you do specialization faster. And you can't go wrong by making things simpler, reducing the steps to do it, and making it easy. I mean, it, that's a formula yeah. for success. Yeah, it's kind of a ubiquitous uh, market out there for that <laughs> as well. You're okay, right. back into the trenches now. What's the realities from your standpoint? Because you guys now are under a lot of pressure to shift to revenue generating activities as well as 
keep the lights on, keep the machinery running in the boiler room, but also up level to the front lines where those workloads are going to be specialized. You have domain expertise in certain markets, the apps might have certain data requirements. What does that all shake out, that whole composable vision? Well, I mean, uh, quite honestly, I mean, the biggest thing for us is, you know, re reducing, our, reducing our data center front plate, reducing our costs, shrinking, you know, shrinking what we're doing. So with this, with this technology and the specialization that it has, we can now, we can take our workloads and what used to be, you know, racks and racks, now we can go and we can compress all that down and make this into this platform and, and deliver the application. I mean, that's, that's the biggest thing that we want is we want to reduce our footprint, reduce our cost, but still be able to deliver that excellent service. And what's the biggest use case that you guys see um, happening out there right now? Well, I mean, I, I think it's one of the, you know, kind of best kept secrets in, in HP right now is the HP Moonshot platform. I've been going out and I've been doing user group meetings. I've been talking to other architects and engineers to say, guys, take a look at this. I mean, the Citrix workload on this thing is just incredible. I mean, the, the density, the performance that we've gotten is amazing. And we've had, we had um, our senior director and, uh, and his manager out here and you know, one of my other goals too was coming out here was to try and get them to see what this technology can do and, 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 and let them kind of in their own minds drive it where they want to go. And, and I think we were able to accomplish that. I mean, I thought with the new form factors and the new technologies that are coming out, um, I think they've really seen what, what it's capable of doing. What's the, what's the customer reaction for guys that, folks that aren't as familiar with Moonshot that you've been having this week, Dr. Tom. You know, I'm really glad you asked that because at this conference I've been doing a lot of these, what we call breakout sessions and theater sessions, and we lead with Moonshot Reinvented when we talk about Moonshot, and I go through the four points, and it actually happened this morning, and those who aren't as familiar as uh, Jason here, I like to see the delight in their face. Oh, you do have ILO now. Oh, you are using Xeon technology, and it's just one boom, rapid succession after another. Uh, recently, I, d I did this uh, yesterday, and we left the meeting, and I took some, uh, uh, which would be noon Moonshot customers, over to our booth to show them, because those four points of reinvention really resonated. And I would say the, uh, the more you're, you called it in the trenches, the more you're in the trenches, it is um, you know, directly proportional to the delight on your face. And the higher level you are, it's not making quite sense. And I don't mean that you know, negatively, but uh, when you're, you know, like I talk, you're a family man, you want to go home at five o'clock, you're hearing these things, it's really resonating, so it's exciting. Yeah. yeah, in the old days it was beeper, now it's basically DMs, WhatsApp, text messages. <laughs> They're going to get a hold of you, so you, you can't hide if something no. goes down, right? No, I mean, you can't hide at all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Dr. Tom, thank you so much. Jason, thanks for sharing the, uh, the customer yeah. perspective on Moonshot. Um, again, we're big fans of what this thing started with Paul, and it looked good to see it. Like, it's a sports car, it's a Ferrari of, uh, of IT. Um, great job, congratulations. Yeah, thank you, and <laughs> we appreciate your time, and thanks again, and Jason, let me thank hey, you publicly. Hey. I appreciate your work Dr. here. Tom, I appreciate it, sir. Thank you very much. On theCUBE, a lot of great stuff happening. We are, oh, we love our moonshots. Our moonshots to get more content. Day three of coverage of three days of wall-to-wall -wall CUBE coverage. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back. You're watching theCUBE. <laughs>